Hey everybody, this is Mayro here. So a lot of you really enjoyed the last little behind the scenes kind of video where I had a look through my old level. Today I thought I'd do the same sort of thing for my new level that I made for Dave. It's called DGR Smells. I'm very creative. And yeah, there's a lot more complexity in this one, so let's take a look. Alright, so the level starts and you start the level and you get you get a cheap cheap on your face. Obviously that would have killed me, but invincibility frames from editor mode made it not happen. So you learn from your mistakes and you go away, right? But that might not be what happens because it's actually complete RNG which fish come out. And if we wait a little bit longer after this fact, after we get this power block that comes down, we either get a chain chomp or a wiggler. So let me break down everything that's happening on the screen right now. So we have a muncher blocking the pipe. We have a already ignited bob -omb on a timer. Falling from the top, we have a power block on a trek. And then let's explain the RNG. Clown cars can either go left or right when they come in contact with spikes. So we spawn a clown car on spikes here. And this clown car is going to hit one of these two blocks. Both of them have a big green cheap cheap in them. So if we activate the level, as you can see, he went right that time, but he went left that time. This one here is falling down. Now this one's responsible for the chain chomp and the wiggler. So in the next troll, basically, there's a massive speedrun section, and the entire point of this is just to bait him into triple jumping. Because you're not meant to triple jump. The most successful way for me, personally, although anyone can do this differently, I like to do a short hop triple jump like this. Now, you see that muncher there? The muncher punishes you for trying to take your time. So let's say you accidentally walked into the pow and you love taking your time. Then you'll get punished because the muncher on tracks will come up and get you. So just like before, the muncher's on a timer. Now we'll move on to this part. So I was trying a few things. I thought I'd put these arrows just in case it was enough. Maybe if, maybe if he was tired enough, maybe he'd get hit by a grand pound cancel. So you just come down here and you have to make this jump. And now it's the joys of wall jumping up here, right? No, it's not. So what's going on here is we have a note block and the note block contains a giant winged muncher and it's being activated by a muncher. But why is it only activating like once you reach it? Like why isn't it, you can't wait for it. So why, why is it only then? Well, the reason why is pretty simple. Um, note blocks can only release their contents if they're on screen. So if we want to move this guy just down a little bit, I would get there and you can see that muncher, he fell down right away. So also if we spawn up here again, the muncher will fall right away. So using this knowledge, we're gonna use some epic spawn tricks right here to make it so that this muncher that's kind of hidden behind the sword, this muncher loads, but this muncher doesn't load. So what you have to do is you have to come down this way and you have to wall jump, and then you only go between the swords, then you come back down, and then you wait for the bomb to activate. You don't go to the top. And now we have some more wizardry. So there's a few things you can do. You can uh, wait for the thwomp, don't do that. He doesn't, <laughs> he's, he's a bit lazy today. He didn't really want to go back up. You can also try and get that power block, uh, which is the solution, breaking news. But let me just explain how this thwomp trick works. Um, this isn't like my original idea. I think I saw it in the troll level. I think it's called Seven Stupid Pieces. So that's where I got the idea from. Basically, we have this block on wings and it's under the floor like this. And this block on wings is pushing the thwomp up. Like the thwomp is already on the ground, but it's pushing it up to the ceiling. And then the block on wings is flying away on a little, on its own little merry adventure so we can't see it anymore. So if we start the level here, you can see how it works. The thwomp is going up there, then he stays. But obviously, his actual position where he has to return to is still down here. So if we hit him and we go back, he will just not rise back up. So for this, as long as you run and duck, you can make it over. And, uh, yeah. But let's say you came to the conclusion that the power was impossible. Because you can't just run. You have to run and duck. Well, you might try and go up here. And you might think that for sure, this is the solution, right? No. <laughs> So when you come through the door, you'll be fed into this lovely, lovely contraption, where it's another randomizer. It's randomized whether it's going to let you go to the left or to the right. Now, this could go many ways. He could not die at all, or he could be dying, like, over and over again. If you go this way, and you try and jump on the question block, then you're screwed, because there's a note block under the question block. If you don't know how that works, basically, up here, we have three diagonal tracks. Same on the other side. We have three diagonal tracks, and they are launching all of the same item onto this track down here. We'll see all of them overlap and we can barely even see the note block. The reason why there's a second question block is to just mask the note block a little bit better. So if you end up being forced to go to the left, what you have to do is you have to wait for the thing. You can do this to pass the time. And all you do is you hit it from below to activate the vine. Now, if you have to go to the right, it's a little bit different. Let's say you died to the note block and you suspect the note block's there again. If you hit this one, you get fished. But if you just jump on it, it's okay because there's no note block. There's also a nice fish in here. Now, in addition to this, 
sometimes a piece switch just randomly activates for absolutely no reason. I mean, there is a reason, but I don't really understand it, to be honest, so whatever. But all we need to know is that if it activates, then it kills you. Once you're out of here, do we jump into this? No, we don't. And there really is a hidden block, I wasn't lying. There's also just hidden block all along here with chain chomps, just for your enjoyment. Anyone who plays this level is probably really looking forward to seeing this contraption. All right, so don't stand here, otherwise uh, when the power block hits the note block, no block moves down, and it tries to push the muncher one block over. And then we- this is just not even a troll, it's just fun platforming. Don't you love to platform but you can't see what you're, what you're spinning on? That's pretty fun. Again, some fun platforming. <laughs> so this part's probably one of my favorite parts right here. I try to make it look like the power block comes out of the pipe, it really is not coming out of the pipe. So the idea is you get this power block, and then you go back and you get another power block. But obviously, if you just get the power block, you're gonna get booed in the face, dude. When a power goes off, all coins drop down. And because of the gravity, because coins now have gravity, they will activate note blocks. All of these note blocks have different types of boo circles in them. So the real solution is to use the invincibility frames you get when the boos are still spawning to just jump through like that. Now we have this section. It looks like there's an invisible block or something. That's not. It's just, just a swamp. <laughs> And now we have this section. This section is incredibly complicated. I'll try and explain it the best I can, but like, if you don't understand it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so a lot of you always claim that I'm ripping off Sieve, and today I'm happy to announce to you, for the first time, I actually am ripping off Sieve. It's not really ripping off though, because he didn't invent this tech, but he did make me understand it and did make me aware of it. This uses the giant gap tech. If you're not familiar with it, basically, if you make the game lag by maybe collecting a power up or taking damage, it will do something to the level. So here, it lags from getting the mushroom, and so a P-switch goes off. So why does that happen? May I introduce you to this lovely contraption that I say made? Okay, let me try my best to explain what's going on. So, you spawn down here while you're waiting for the chain chomp. The shells are gonna go down, and they're gonna be stuck on these platforms. Do you see that? They're stuck down here. Now, why are the platforms on tracks? Well, items on tracks will always stay loaded, even when you leave the area. Let's say, for example, we left this area. The game would stop trying to load the munchers back at the start by the pipe, because it would just be too much to load, right? But all items on tracks will stay loaded, and all items on items on tracks, like these P-switches and soon-to-be-the shells, will stay loaded. You see these bills? These bill blasters moving back and forth? You notice how there's a bit of a gap in them? Well, item lag is enough to separate them. If they get separated, it means they're no longer on an item that's on tracks, which means they unload. If they unload, then that means this shell, or this shell, they don't have a wall to bounce off anymore. It hits a P-switch. Sorry if I didn't explain it very well, Sieve Gaming has a video explaining it really well, but I just wanted to try and explain the contraption a little bit to you, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, for the section, we have to dodge the mushrooms. Uh, the item lag thing doesn't actually work if, like, you know, that thing was never on screen. So if I spawn here, it doesn't work. So every time I test the level, I have to play this entire section. Jump over the mushrooms. It's not really that difficult. It's, it's pretty generous. And now we have a nice, fun propeller section. It's telling you to hit the Z button here. So do what you're told, just hit the Z button. It's gonna be worth it. Get the propeller, fly up. Haha, -ha, nice try, dummy. You see, not many people really know much stuff about the propeller suit because no one really puts it in their levels. But you can't use the propeller suit. Like, you can't spin out of a spin. I'm trying to bait him into spin jumping, but if he does some wall jumps, he's gonna just get it without spinning and propel it up. So now we just have a little trap here to make sure he's small, and we have another fun section here. He has to try and time it so he gets this. Just kidding, no he didn't. The actual solution here is just to do a wraparound jump like this and wall jump off, then get the propeller suit. Next of all, follow the coins, get put into this lovely soft lock area where you have the pleasure of trying to get these cannonballs. It's not actually a soft lock, it's just what it's just an, it's a fun anti-soft lock to make it hard to die. And you just have to make this one simple wall jump, and there we are. Checkpoint two, we've reached it. Now there's a few things that you can't do here just yet. You'll be going and getting an item soon and you have to be small to get out of here. So let's get small real quick. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. And we got the propeller suit. We're gonna use the propeller suit to get in the pipe. And back to checkpoint one, baby. So you're probably saying like, Mero, there was literally nowhere else you could have gone. Well, that's true. This isn't the same checkpoint one you think it is. I mean, it is, but you have the propeller suit now, which means you can go up here. If you go in here, then you will be sent back to CP1 because this entire thing is just blocked off by invisible blocks. But if you come this way, you can proceed with the level again. You can come down here. You've got to cancel your ground pound right at the bottom. 
and then fly up here to get a fire flower. So the main gimmick of this level, and the reason why I wanted to make this level, is just cycling between CP1 and CP2 over and over again. So now we have this little bob -omb section, and this is barely even a troll. This is just a little fun platforming section. You gotta activate the bombs and uh, get on with it. So you take damage here, you get the bomb. Uh, I probably failed now. Crap. <laughs> so you just come through here and get the bomb, you place it down here. Another One really fun thing that can happen is you can accidentally hit it into the piranha plant. I thought that would be nice. And next you have to come over this way. Now if you go straight in that pipe, it's gonna be a CP1 because you won't have the propeller suit anymore. But if you have the foresight to go over and above, we'll go this way and you can get the bob on. Now, you're gonna have to look left, otherwise this happens, and you're back at CP1, for real. Let's say you had the bomb, you break these open. First of all, the grinder kills you to get you down to small size, and then it's the final thing. I knew that Dave wouldn't have a clue how I did the RNG. So, I just told him there was a 50% chance of getting it right. This is such an obvious fake, this is such an obvious troll, that he probably won't fall for it. But he might fall for it. And if he does, it'll be very funny. If he goes in here, very creative troll. I'm very creative, what can I say? The real solution is just to take the key, go up here, and go in this door. And that's the end of the level. There we are, level complete. So I actually thought this was a pretty easy level when I was designing it, but Clear Rate says otherwise, and Dave said it took him a really long time. So I feel kind of bad about that. This is the last troll level I'm making for Dave before Mario Maker 2 comes out. There is one more troll level that I made in the past that I'd like him to play, but only if he gets time. If he does end up playing it, then I'll release a video, same as this one, explaining how it works. But yeah, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.